Good morning, Rose Hill. So glad to see all of your beautiful faces. Yes, we bless God for another Sunday, another day to give him glory, to give him honor and give him praise. Precious Jesus, how I love you, how I lift high my voice with your praise, Holy Spirit, I
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, Rose Hill. Come on, would you bless the Lord in this place this morning? Hallelujah. Listen, we're so excited that you chose to come out and worship with us. Amen. We're going to have a wonderful time this morning. Amen. We're excited about those that will be baptized this morning. Come on, let's thank God for them. Hallelujah. And we're excited about a man named Jesus. Amen. The one that woke you up this morning. The one that allowed you to know what shoe to put on what foot. Come on, can we lift our hands in this place? Hallelujah. Come on, just create an atmosphere of worship in this place. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this awesome day that you blessed us with, Father, a day that we've never seen before. Father, this is something that we don't take for granted. We know and understand that this day is a blessing from you. So, Father, today we come to lift up your name. We come to celebrate your name. For, Father, you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, Father, your name is worthy to be praised. So, Father, we ask today that you would have your way in this place, Father. I ask that you would bless that man of God, that woman of God. Bless that child, Lord God. I thank you for a new mother, a new father, a new sister, a new brother because one touch hallelujah one touch from you can change our very lives and for that father we say thank you now father we thank you for all of your wonderful blessings we thank you for one Danny M Donaldson senior father we lift him up today as he prepares to come and preach and teach your uncompromising word father have your way in this very place, Father, and we shall be careful to always give you the honor, give you the glory, and to give you true praise. Hallelujah in this place. Come on, hallelujah in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah in this place. Lord, we love you. We honor you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap those hands. Clap those hands. Hallelujah. Come on, remain standing. If you're not standing, come on, get on your feet. Get on your feet and receive now the most anointed music ministry on this side of heaven. Our very own Rose Hill Music Ministry. Come on, let's go. Hallelujah. Come on, so hallelujah in this place on today. Come on, aren't you excited to praise God and give him your all? Just trust him in all that he does. Hallelujah. Come on, as he blessed you. Come on, as he kept you. As he protected you. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, we will praise God on one accord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. You are accountable. You are dependable.
lift that up. Can you tell him? Say, you are accountable. Lord, you are dependable. And I trust you, Lord. Come on, say that one more time. We're going to say, God, you are accountable. Lord, you are dependable. And I trust you, Lord. Hey, Lord, you are accountable. You are dependable. And I trust you. Trust him with your heart. Come on, just trust him with your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. You are. Yes, you are. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Does anybody want the Lord to make them over on today? Can we just celebrate Jesus right there? Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, just worship him. Listen, the song says, you
even know that Lord, He makes all things new. All things are passed away because He makes all things new. Yeah. Now we want y'all to sing it with us. Come on, lift your voice. Sing, make me over. ready for change Lord is there anybody ready for change is there anybody ready for change Whoa.
let the church say yes 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 he made a way thank you we honor you with lifted hands we bless your name with praise on our in our hearts and with praise on our lips we say thank you for your manifold blessings you've been a good God you've been an amazing God and when we look back over our lives and all that you've done all we can say is hallelujah so, Father, as we assemble ourselves in this place today, we give you permission to have your way. We give you honor and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the saints of God said amen, amen, amen. Come on, bless God all over this place. Amen, amen. Grab your Bible, saints of God. Thank God for our music ministry. Aren't they phenomenal? There is a word today. I'm so excited about our baptism today. We haven't baptized in almost two years. Year and a half, almost two years. And so that today we get a chance to baptize again. We got 30 souls that are going into the pool. Amen. Grab your Bible, the gospel according to John, John chapter number 21. Just for a moment, John chapter number 21. Starting at verse number 15, when you're there, shout amen. I know that you're ready to proceed. Anybody need a word? Anybody hungry for a word? The Bible says, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, shepherd my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter hurt because he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. I want to use for our subject today, restored, restored. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In our text, both the Immaculate Conception and the Immaculate Resurrection 
have occurred. Fact about it is, it all started when the promised Messiah, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Rock of Ages, the Ancient of Days, the Son of David, the Son of Man, the only begotten of the Father, Jesus the Christ, traveled down through 42 generations. And the word says, and the word became flesh. And he dwelt among us and we saw his glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Began when God populated the womb of a virgin, Mary, with purpose. I'm going somewhere. Watch this. Whenever a womb is populated, regardless of how it happened, it has purpose. That which is to be birthed has purpose. I'm going somewhere. Mary birthed purpose in the form of Jesus, who demonstrated submission and sovereignty. He demonstrated submission when he willfully became poor that you might be rich. When he willfully died that you and I might live. But yet at the same time, he let us know that he was sovereign, that he was the son of God when the skies opened up and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It also verified the fact that he was sovereign when they hung him on that old rugged cross. And on that old rugged cross, the son says, I refuse to shine. When they hung him on that old rugged cross, the earth began to quake. And it was verified when the grave began to give up his dead and the dead began to walk the streets. But what I want to talk about today happened early that Sunday morning. Early that Sunday morning before the break of day, the Bible says that Mary Magdalene, the woman that Jesus had, had, had drove the demons out of, comes to the grave to visit Jesus and she notices that the stone has been rolled away. The Bible says, startled that the stone had been rolled away, she didn't know what to do, but she ran and got Peter and John. After all, it was Peter, James, and John that seemingly were always with Jesus, and she ran to get them, and she says, I don't know what they've done with him. They say, what are you talking about? She says, my Jesus, I don't know where they have laid him. Somebody has rolled the stone away, and they've taken my Jesus. The Bible says that Peter and John began to run to the sepulcher. They began to run to Jesus to see what had been done to the body. And the Bible says, watch this, that John outran Peter. Now, here's the heavy question. Did John outrun Peter because of his youth? Did he outrun Peter because he was in better shape? Did he outrun Peter because he loved Jesus more? Or was Peter at some disadvantage? Or is there something in the text that we can't rightfully see that may have made Peter run a little slower than John? Can we dig a little bit today? Watch this. The Bible says that John shows up at the sepulcher. That's the tomb, and he sees that the stone has been rolled away, and he looks in and he sees Jesus' burial clothes and the tomb is unoccupied. The Bible says Peter shows up on the scene and he goes a little further and he goes in the tomb. And he notices that Jesus is not there, but his grave clothes are. And they both take a moment and they look around and Mary is still standing outside. I'm going somewhere. When they look around and they don't see Jesus, the Bible says something Ironic. It says that the disciples went home, but Mary stayed outside the tomb crying. Mary refuses to leave the tomb. Mary refuses to give up on Jesus. Mary refuses to go to her house, and because she lingered longer, she saw something that others didn't see. I'm, I'm going somewhere if you give me a minute. 
Because she was willing to linger longer, the Bible says when she walked in the tomb, she saw two angels. And the question was, were the angels there all the time or did they just show up when Mary walked in? Or was it that she was seeking Jesus so vehemently that she saw something that other people couldn't see? And I came to tell you this morning that if you would linger just a little bit longer in God's presence and if you were hungry and if you would go after him like nobody else goes after him, maybe you'll see God like you've never seen him before and maybe you'll get a word like you've never gotten before and maybe you'll experience manifestation like you've never experienced before and maybe your life will shift like it has never shifted before and only if you would linger a little, oh, I'm going somewhere longer. Watch this. I've learned that if you would seek him more sincerely, that you'll see him more clearly. And as you seek him more sincerely and see him more clearly, you'll understand fully what you should do when other people pull out their hair, throw in the towel, wave the white flag of surrender, and you'll have the ability to walk on what other people sink in. Watch this. The Bible says when she walked in, she was crying, and the angel says, woman, why are you crying? In other words, watch this. Exactly what he said was going to happen has happened. In other words, it doesn't matter how impossible it looks. If he said it, even death can't stop it. Y'all didn't, didn't come to have church. If he said it, a crooked boss can't stop it. Y'all didn't come to have church. If he said it, racism can't stop it. I, I don't know who I came to talk to today, but you've been discouraged about people at your job and what they're trying to do to you. What you ought to be concerned with is what God said, because if God said it and you have faith enough to believe it, then you have the ability to walk in. Oh. Y'all gonna make me preach too early. Watch this. The Bible says because she lingered. She saw the angels and the angels asked, why are you crying? And then Jesus walked up behind her. She turns around and sees Jesus. Says, why are you crying? The Bible says she thought he was the gardener. She says, if you would just tell me where you laid him. I'll take him with me. See, I love that. See, watch this. She says, he's been so good to me in life that I can't leave him in death. But she don't understand that death couldn't keep him. So he had to come back to life. Y'all, 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 I don't know. I'm going to shout in a minute. Oh, somebody, she says, if you would just show me where you laid him. Oh, I feel my help coming. Watch this. I feel my help coming. If you show, I'll take him with me. And watch this. He says, Mary. The Bible says she couldn't recognize him, but she recognized his voice. What do you do when you can't see Jesus in your situation? You better have the ability to recognize his voice when you can't recognize his face. I wish I had somebody in the building that said, I've talked with him enough that I know his voice. How do you know his voice like that? Because he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Oh, it's too early. Watch this. I, I can't go there yet. It's too early. And so she says, Raboni, it means teacher, Messiah, Jesus. Could it possibly be you? And the Bible says, he says, stop clinging on me. Watch this. I ain't going to my father yet. I got to ascend to heaven. So don't cling on me yet. But the girl said, I'm so happy to see you that. He says, go tell my disciples. It, it, isn't, it funny? Isn't, it the, isn't it funny that, that the ones that walk with him had to be sent a message? The ones that he fed had to be sent a message. The ones, come on somebody, y'all, y'all, 
the ones that he did miracles in front of, the ones that he was transfigured in front of, I got to send you a text message and an email to tell you where I am. You're not waiting on me. You, you didn't believe that I was going to do what I said I was going to do. You at church every Sunday and you don't believe that I'm, I got to send you an email and a text message so that you can show up where I said I would be. Seemed like if anybody was waiting, you ought to be waiting on me. Seemed like you should have been waiting by the tomb like this. I'm, why are you sitting here? He said Sunday morning he was going to get back up. And I'm not going to wait. I got to go. Watch this. Watch this. But maybe, but maybe, but maybe, just maybe, just maybe Peter had an issue. Because the last time he saw Jesus, it wasn't good. Maybe he didn't run as fast because he was thinking about what he did the last time he saw him. Maybe he didn't linger around the tomb because he had messed up. What do you mean? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 26, verse 31 through 33 says, Then Jesus told them this very night, you will fall away on my account. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, go ahead to Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away on your account, I never will. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Verse 69, verse chapter 26 says, Now Peter was sitting in the outer court, and a servant girl came in when they had arrested Jesus and said, Weren't you also with Jesus? But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, girl. He said, then he went out of the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I'm telling you, I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses and swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately the, roast, the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus. Before the rooster crows, you would disown me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. And so now you have risen and I got to run back to the tomb. And, 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 but the last time I saw you, I let you down. I said I would die for you, but when the pressure was on, I choked. I said I was going to live for you for the rest of my life, but I failed. The last time I saw you, I made a promise I couldn't keep. The Bible says he left sorrowful and he left sad because he thought he was ready but cracked down the pressure. He had left Jesus, the man who fed him, the man who protected him, and the man who would ultimately die for him. Here's a heavy question. Can you imagine how he felt? Can I ask you a question? Have you ever let someone down that you love, respected, and revered? Can I ask you a heavier question? Have you ever let yourself down? Because Peter not only let Jesus down, but he let himself down. And many people in here today, you are not just struggling with who you let down, but the fact that you let yourself down. The fact that I keep on struggling with this. The fact that I failed and said I wouldn't. The fact. What did you do? Maybe you promised you would finish college, but dropped out. Maybe you promised you would love her forever and got caught up with another chick. Maybe you promised you'd be a good pastor and got caught up in a scandal. Maybe you were tight on your money and you took something out of the register with all intentions of paying it back, but they caught you before you could. Maybe you had a baby before you got married. 
Maybe you had an abortion. Maybe you abused somebody, or maybe you're disappointed because you keep letting somebody abuse you. And you said you would never let anybody mistreat you, and now you're the person you said you would never be. Maybe you promised to be a great dad, but you weren't. Maybe you promised to be a great mom, but you weren't. But whatever you did, and however you feel, God sent me here with a service announcement, a public service announcement. And the public service announcement is this. All have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory. Lean on your neighbor and say, I don't feel so bad because everybody has done it. All have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't look at me all sophisticated. All have sinned and fallen short. Don't look at me like you, Miss Holy Roller. You done done something in your life. Don't look at me like that, bro. You done done something in your life that let God down and let you down because all Maybe you didn't do what I did, and maybe I didn't do what you did, and maybe you didn't do what she did, and maybe she didn't do what he did, but everybody done done something. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Watch this. Watch this. Sit down. We're going to shout in a minute. Here's what we must understand. When people hurt us, we must not forget we too have hurt others. And sometimes when people hurt us, we quickly forget the fact that we have hurt others. And when people make mistakes, it's important to remember that we too have made mistakes. And sometimes when people make mistakes, we act like we haven't made any. I'm coming, somebody. I like what Bishop Walker said. Bishop Walker said on social media, he says, we live in such a punitive, judgmental world, and people are so quick to condemn based on what they think they know about a person. However, God's plans are never postponed based on someone's inability to see past your failures. I came to tell you this morning that God's plans are never postponed just because somebody can't see beyond your failures. Watch this. Sometimes people will find you in the middle of a chapter of your life and judge you like you're at the end of the book. Come here, somebody. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you can't catch me in the middle of a chapter that's in the middle of my book and judge me like I'm at the end of my book. I still got a lot of chapters left. And just because I messed up a few chapters doesn't mean that my book will end bad. In other words, my book might be better because I had a few flawed chapters to help me walk in the fullness of my restoration. <clears throat> I got to I gotta baptize these babies. Watch this. I came to tell you no matter how flawed you are and no matter how broken you are and no matter how many mistakes you have made that God still loves you and that God still values you and that God still wants you. I, I need to say it again, that God still loves you and God still values you and God still wants you. I dare you to throw up your hands and say God still loves me and God still values me and God still wants me. Even after all I've done, God still loves me. God still values me and God still wants me. That's something to shout about. And somebody in this auditorium and somebody who's going to watch me on the TV broadcast and somebody who's going to listen to me on the radio broadcast and somebody who's going to watch me on the internet broadcast, I got a message for you and the message is God can play perfectly on broken instruments and God can draw straight lines with crooked sticks. I don't know who I came to talk to. Look at your neighbor and say I'm a broken instrument but I'm available. I, I may be a crooked stick but God can draw a straight line with a crooked stick. Maybe y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but when I was little, we had trees in our backyard, and we had pecan trees, and those, those limbs would be crooked, and we would break one off, and we wanted to play marbles, and we would draw this little thing like a fish on the, on the, on, in the dirt, and it would come out perfectly with a broken stick or a crooked stick. It doesn't matter the stick. It matters the person working the stick. And if God is working through me, I may not be perfect, but God is perfect, and the result can be perfect even with a flawed instrument. Oh, God, 
I came to get somebody today. I came to get somebody who's suffering from low self-esteem. I came to get somebody who's rolling around in a depressed state. I came to get somebody who's feeling down on their luck. I came to feel somebody who long, get somebody who no longer feels valuable. Can I, can I take my time and teach a little bit right here? I, I was in, I was in, if, if you don't know me well, you don't know, I, I, I like cars. I'm a car buff. I like cars. And when God saved me, he didn't take that away. So I still like them. And uh, so when we travel, I always go find dealerships there that we don't have here. And so I was in Los Angeles, and I left and uh, went to the Ferrari dealership. And uh, so I'm just looking around in there. I'm just, I'm just window shopping. Touch a neighbor and say, I'm going to have a word money one day. I'm going to have it. It's, it's on the way. But I was window shopping this day. I just window shopping. And I walked in, and I walked in, and I saw one of my favorite cars. I want to show you something. I saw one of my favorite cars. It's called the LaFerrari. Their newest, best sports car that they had created. This was some years ago. And I asked the lady behind the desk, and I'm looking at it, and I'm, I'm admiring the lines, and you can see the engine in the back. It's beautiful. It's flawless. And, and not a scratch, not a chip, nothing. I said, ma'am, how much does this car cost? She said, that car is $4 million. I said, "Woo, she nice, boy. She nice. I wasn't even going to act like I could buy that. I was just looking. Just look a hooing. And, uh, and, 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 and next to to that car was an old, old, old Ferrari, but it was in good shape. And out of curiosity, I turned to the lady and I said, how much is that one? She said, that one's 30 million. <laughs> now watch this. Y'all tripping over the price, I was tripping over the price difference. Because this car is brand new, this car is 50 years old. And the car that's 50 years old was more valuable than the brand new one. Why? Because the old car has stood the test of time. There were other cars that started out with it that didn't make it. And because it had the ability to stand still and still remain valuable and hold on to its value, it was more valuable than the new one. Look at your neighbor and say, I may not be a new model, but I've endured. They had a lot of people who started out with me. They had a lot of people who said I wouldn't make it, but I'm still here. And the fact that I'm still here means I got value. Sit I gotta go watch it. So right now I got an exercise for you. Here's the exercise. I dare you to jump on your feet. I dare you to throw up your hands and say, I may not be perfect. Throw up your hands and say, I may be flawed. Yes, I'm a work in progress. Yes, I did it. I admit it. But listen, God ain't through with me yet. That was just a chapter in my life. And I make a declaration today that I will not stop in the middle of a chapter that's in the middle of my book, that God still has a lot of chapters to write in my life. And I'm not going to even wait until he begins to write them. I'm going to go ahead and give God advanced praise for what he's about to do in my life and how he's about to use me and how God's going to take all my failures and all of my shortcomings and use them and get glory from the stuff that I thought was going to bring me down. God's going use it to bring me up. It's going to be a part of my testimony. I'm not going to be afraid of it. I'm not going to be ashamed of it. I'm going to help somebody who's going through what I used to. Right there. Go ahead. That's a good place to worship. Don't be cute. That's a good place to worship. That's a good place to worship. Throw your hands up and say, God, I thank you that you still have plans for me. God, I thank you that you didn't give up on me. I thank you not for a second chance or a third chance. I thank you for another chance. Come on, right there, right there, right there. Don't play with this. Don't play with this. Don't play with this. Somebody sitting here, you, you've been thinking about, you, 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 you've even let suicidal thoughts creep in your mind. Your life is not over. You're going to live again. You're going to breathe again. You're going to sleep again. A lot of you, you're going to marry again. You're going to get another job. In fact, you're going to get a better job. You're going to start your own business. And some of the stuff that you think was there to destroy you is actually going to take you to another level. Watch this. 
She could not recognize Jesus. I got it. Ah, God. She couldn't recognize Jesus, but she heard his voice. Here, here's what I want to show you. The reason why sometimes you can't recognize Jesus, because sometimes Jesus is in stuff that you thought he wasn't in. What, what do you mean? Because sometimes, sometimes God looks like a, a pink slip. And the pink slip didn't look like God. Sometimes God is in a breakup when somebody's not the right person for you and you didn't think that God was in it, but God was in it. The breakup. I, I got to go and I, I got to give you three quick points, but watch this. When, 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 I, when I became the pastor of Rosie, I was working in corporate America and I was, I was out doing outside sales. I was selling cell phones and I had sold a bunch of them, like 60 of them, all at one time to one company. And man, I was excited. But God was dealing with me about being a pastor. I sent them out on like a, a Thursday or Friday. When I got back Monday or Tuesday, they were all back. Now, here's what you got to understand. When you're in a sales business, when they send that back, it puts you 60 in the hole. So if I had to do 40 that month, now I have to do 100 to catch up. And they give you two or three months to catch back up. And if you don't catch back up, you get fired. And I was doing everything I could to catch back up. My managers were going on appointments with me. And they were like, man, your, your sales pitch is flawless. I don't know what's going on. And I sat down in my manager's office one day. He says, Danny, I don't think you're going to make it. He says, do you know what's going on in your life? And, and out of my belly, I said, this is God. I, I don't know why I said that. I said, I said, don't worry about me. This is God. He says, I don't want to have to fire you. He says, I said, I'll make it easy. I quit. And the next Sunday, I was the pastor of Rose Hill. And I've never worked a nine to five since. And watch this. That firing, that quitting may not have looked like God. But I still heard his voice, and even that which looked like my demise, which looked like a demotion was actually a promotion. I don't know who I came to talk to. I got to go. But watch this. While you're standing, let me just give you these three points. I gotta, we got to baptize these babies. Galatians 6 and 6 says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. I'm afraid that the church has gotten out of the restoration business. And that the church in some regards has gotten very worldly in that we are now finger pointers too. You saw what she did? You saw what he did? You heard? Did you hear what he did? Did you hear? Did you hear? Instead of saying, watch this, our job is not to point, our job is to pick. While you're pointing, you ought to be picking. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. And stop acting like you've never done nothing. Some little girl gets pregnant and then people are pointing fingers. Some of y'all got pregnant too. And watch this. And, and watch this. How many people were virgin when you got married? You just were blessed not to get pregnant, but don't act like you didn't do it. Y'all not talking back to me. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Why are you pointing fingers at other folks who got caught for doing what you did? The only difference is their stuff wasn't public. They went public, yours wasn't. And what if we start grabbing people who are hurting, grabbing people who have fallen, grabbing people who have taken great failures? And say, baby, that ain't nothing but a learning lesson. That's, you don't lose in Christ. Come here, come here, come here. Get up, get up. I got you. I got you. I got you. Jesus did something for Peter. Man, y'all got me so excited I couldn't finish the text. Jesus shows up for Peter. Peter, watch this, not knowing what to do, goes back to doing what he used to do. Peter says, I'm going fishing. Jesus pulled him out of the fishing business and said, I called you to be fishers of men. But when he let Jesus down, he went back to doing what he used to do. And how many of us, when we let Jesus down, go back to doing what we used to do? But the problem was, watch this, 
they were fishing and it wasn't working. The thing about it is when you go back to doing what you used to do, it don't work like it used to because you know too much now. And Jesus shows up on the bank before he ascends and goes back to glory. He's got, here's what I love about him. He's got to go get Peter. He could have just went back to glory and said, that's what you get. You let me down, I'm leaving. And you deal with your feelings, deal with the repercussions, deal with all. No, he goes back and shows up on the bank and says, hey, have y'all caught anything? Bible says they had been fishing all night. They caught nothing. He says, throw your nets on the other side. Y'all let me down, but I'm still giving you instructions. I'm still giving you guidance. I'm still working in your life. How many of us in the room that have let him down and he's still working in our lives? Still giving us instructions. Still giving us grace. Still giving us compassion. The Bible says, Peter sees him, takes off his fishing gear, dives in the water and swims to him. The other people grab the fish. They come on a small boat. Peter pulls the fish. Ironically, Peter pulls the fish in off the boat, which is really a replica of what you should really be doing, pulling in men like you're pulling in those fish. Now watch this. Just stand with me. Just stand with me. I want you to see this. Jesus has this dialogue with him, and he says, Peter, do you love me more than these? And he says, I love you, Lord. Here's what you don't understand. In the Greek, there are four different, different terms for love. And one is storge, which simply means I love you with, with I love you like a, a, a phileo. Phileo means brotherly love. Storge means like I love a relative. Agape means unconditional love. Eros means sexual love. And so when he says, he said, do you agape me? He says to him, I storge you. I phileo, I, I, I got brotherly love. Watch this. It's like Peter said, how can I say I love you after I let you down? So it's, it's like this. Peter, do you love me? I like you, Lord. I, I like you a lot. But how do I say I love you when I let you down? Take care of my sheep, Peter. Peter, do you love me? Lord, I, I like you, Lord. Peter, that's not what I, Peter, do you love me? Because you can let me down and still love me. And you can let me down and I can still love you. And what I really came to do was to restore you today because I got work for you. Because you're going to preach at Pentecost, Peter, and people are going to be saved because of you. You're going to walk by and your shadow's going to heal people, Peter. You're going to go and preach the word to the Gentiles and the Holy Spirit's going to fall on them. Your story is not over, Peter. You don't even know you're in the middle of your book. Could you be 60 and still not be finished? Yes. Still be in the middle of a chapter, in the middle of your book. Yes. I don't know who I came to talk to, but here it is. I got to go. So we ought to be the same grace that Christ gave to Peter, same grace that God gave to us, is the same grace we ought to give to others. What did he give him? Three things. I'm out of here. He gave him an expungement. What does expungement mean? Many of you don't have anything on your record, so you may not know what expungement is. Watch this. I've dealt with a lot of people, helped a lot of people. Expungement means that you did something, but they take it off your record as if you never did it. And so Jesus gives Peter an expungement, and here's a heavy question. When's the last time you expunged somebody? When's the last time you gave him a fresh start? He gave Peter an assignment. And he finally, he gave Peter an assurance. All the disciples, before he got out of there, he says, I'll be with you even until the end of the world. You got your expungement. Now it's time for you to walk in your assignment with the assurance that God will be with you. And I don't know who I was sent here for today. But watch this, I've been, I've been holding this message for months. Couldn't preach it until today. Now who am I preaching to? I don't know. But what I do know is I had to preach it today. And so before, 
before we take these babies, and I don't care how old you are, I call you babies, these babies to the water, I want to give somebody an opportunity to come. Come to Christ. Come to repentance. Come to church membership. Whatever it is that God laid on your heart for you to do today, I want you to start moving right now. I see you coming. Yes, this word was for you. I want you to start moving right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Start moving. Oh, those are our people moving. I see our people moving. Come on. If that's you, if that's you, don't take it lightly. Don't take it for granted. Come on. Get here. Get here. Get here. Get here. Get here. Hallelujah. Come on. Clap those hands, saints of God. Clap those hands. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? From the top right there. For a saint. And got up. Hey man, listen, I want to give another appeal. If you're here today, listen, we won't be much longer. I want everybody to stay put, stay tight for me. Nobody walking, nobody moving unnecessarily. But if the Lord is speaking to you, if you're standing there and you know what, you know what, I need to know this God that this pastor is preaching about. Oh, I need to rededicate my life. At one time, my life was on fire for God. Oh, you know what, I need a church home where I can hear the word on a daily basis. I mean, a, a weekly basis, a bi-weekly basis. So that I can keep that fire stirred up on the inside of me. If that's you today, will you come? Do me a favor. I know you can't touch each other. You got masks on. So just look at your neighbor and say, do you need somebody to walk up there with you? You need, you need some assistance. You need some help. You need, in, I, if I can be of assistance in any way, in a shape, form, or fashion, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Come on, clap. That's what I love. That's what I love. One more appeal, one more appeal, one more appeal, one more appeal. Shh, I like it. Shh, hang on. Listen, if that's you, the service would not be complete if you didn't come. We thank God for the ones who did. Last week we had a great harvest of souls. But listen, if we miss one, then it won't be complete. And if you're sitting back there saying, Pastor, you, you, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't, it's not about you being ready. In other words, ready to use your willpower to fight whatever you're fighting against. You just need to be ready to submit and say, you know what, God, I, just, I give it up. I can't do it by myself. I can't handle it by myself. I've tried it. I keep messing it up. I turn it over to you. Today is about turning your life over to God. And is there anyone here who says, you know what, that's what I need to do. I need to turn my life over to God. He's my creator. He made me. He knows all about me. Come on, right here. Yes. He knows all about me. He knows all about me. He knows my issues. He knows everything. Yes, come on, clap for him, church. This is a bold step of faith. It's a bold step of faith. I love it. Shh. Listen, I'm, 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 still, I'm still not quite at peace yet. I just need to do it one more time. And maybe there's somebody sitting there saying, well, maybe God was talking to them. He was, but he was talking to you too. And listen, everybody, all eyes on me. It would be easy for you to walk out of here today and ignore that voice. Because that voice is not a bully. It's not going to bully you up here. It's a still small voice that you have to say, you know what? I'm going to obey today. Because every time you say no, it gets easier and easier and easier to say no. But I promise you this, if you say yes today, your life will never be the same. It doesn't mean that everything's going to change instantly, but it does mean, watch this, you may not change your destination in one day, but you can change your direction. And so if that's you, if that's you, will you come? Will you come? 
Will you come? I'm going to ask you one more favor for me, too. We're going to raise our offering after this, and we're going to baptize these babies. For all of you who can stay, I would love for you to stay and just shout with them and just be happy and jubilant and celebrate with us as we baptize these babies. We won't, we won't be long, I promise you. I'm going to take them in one after the other, one after the other. Come here, Elder Donaldson. I'm going to need you to take the mic for a minute while I go get ready. All right, listen. God bless you. So excited to see y'all. Love y'all so much. I know God has great plans for y'all. And we're so excited to have you as a part of the body of Christ and a part of our Rose Hill family. Everybody else, you may be seated. Give God a hand clap of praise. Listen, our ministry workers will take you right there to the right of you. And they'll speak to you in the back. Amen. Amen. Well, saints, it's giving time. Come on, let's get excited to give unto the Lord. First, before we do that, let's thank God for that word. Amen. What a word. What a powerful word. Amen. Well, as we prepare to give here at Rose Hill, we are a ministry that believes in giving. Amen. We believe in the tithe. We believe in sowing 10% of our increase. We believe in giving a liberal offering. Amen. And because of your very obedience, I know from experience that the Lord will reward you for your faithfulness. Amen. Listen, if you need an envelope, lift that hand, lift that hand. Our workers are in the aisles. Amen. Amen. You all have been such a blessing when it comes to giving. This ministry has been able to sow into our community, be a blessing to our students, our seniors, been able to give away scholarships, houses, cars, all types of different things just because of you. Amen. Listen, we'll give you a minute to fill out your gifts and we'll be right back. Listen, if you're texting, if you're texting your seed, our short code is simply in the two box, 84321. And then go down in the message box, put a dollar sign, the amount you want to give, and press send. If it's your first time, it's going to send you some information that you need to fill out. But if you've been doing it over and over, your seed goes right in. Amen? Amen. We'll be right back to pray over your seed. seeds lift your phones however you're giving let's pray father we thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom father we thank you for doing just what your word says your word says you'll bless some 30 some 60 some even 100 fold so father we thank you in advance for the harvest that's coming our way because of our very obedience lord we love you we honor you in jesus name we pray Amen.
Ultimately, this is how everything's going to work. We're going to bring all of our candidates this way, and we're going to baptize them one by one. I'm going to pray and speak the declaration over them right now, so I'm not going to do it for every person that walks in. And so as soon as they get in, I'm going to baptize them. So listen, family, so be ready. If you want to take pictures, you want to come closer, you're welcome to come closer. Get in position so you can take pictures of your loved ones. We don't want you to miss their baptism. But because we have 30 of them, we're going to have to keep them flowing, okay? And uh, so move, position yourselves accordingly. And uh, family, get close here. Get these first few rows. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for every person that we baptize today. Father, we thank you for them coming to the understanding of who Jesus is and accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives. And Father, today, as they turn their lives over to you, God, as they go down into this water, let it represent death to the old and life to the new. Let them come up new believers, new individuals. And Father, I baptize all of them now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.
candidate Maria Morgan. Let's receive candidate Omari Knight. Great big shout of praise for the candidates blessed at the hill today. Come on, we can do better than that. Give God some praise for them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We bless God for the candidates that were baptized today. If you'll stand on your feet for the final prayer and final benediction. God, we just bless you for this awesome day. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the word of God that manifested itself today. And we pray, God, that as we leave this place, but never your presence, that we'll keep doing the things that you called us to do. We'll keep being the people that you purposed us to be. And we give you praise and thanksgiving for all you've done and all you're going to do. And the people of God said amen. Tell somebody it's so good to have had you here today. God bless you. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed.